the approach to playing a robot. So when you're doing the thing where the robots are switched off and you're sitting still and you're staring straight ahead, where does that come from? Do they, do they go through how you do that? Are you all supposed to do it in the same way? Or is that just going back to drama school? What's that? Yeah, that's just figuring out how to be very still and, and well, this, you know, I've never played anything like that before. It's, it's very new uh, for me to be able to play something that it's actually not a robot. So it's an AI. So it, it's a human that has, uh, you know, something in his mind that has been, uh, it's a program, basically. So it's not like we're doing like a robot kind of body, but there is a stillness about it, and there is, it's more about facial, facial uh, expression. Um, and when we, hold, when we go to those places where they're fixing us or whatever, we have to behave like we're just in a sort of like a neutral mode. Um, it's all about, you know, stillness, and it's sort of like a, a meditative state. Okay. You know, like I've 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 done meditation before. Um, Does that help? Does that do you feel yes, yourself relaxing yes, like that? Yeah, it's, it's all about breathing. It's all about just trying to be in the moment and not let your mind go crazy, uh, which is pretty difficult. Yeah. But it's basically just uh, you know try not to uh, try not to think that much. And even though when you think, you don't want to think. You already think. <laughs> right, that's that's the principle yeah. of meditation. It's like okay, I, I'm not gonna think, I'm not gonna think. You're thinking. So basically, it's about letting it all sink, and, and slowly the thoughts are going to be, you know, disappearing. And when you realize your mind is just calmer, that's it. And that's where I try to go when I have to play those scenes. It's like acting without acting because you're you're working incredibly hard to be that still that you're not technically doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's um, it's subtle but uh, you know. Um when you accepted the role you know, obviously now when we look at the show it's like this is astonishing and the style of it is, is fantastic. But when you accepted the role, were you remotely nervous about it? Uh, playing, as you say, an AI as an Android, were you were you like, how's this gonna look? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was curious. I was uh, a bit anxious to understand. Uh, first of all, there's no backstory, or there's I mean, there's nothing to really uh, work with in terms of preparation, uh, and that was kind of uh, very new and also a little bit uh, uncomfortable, which I thought was good because uh, uh, playing a host is it's very much about being. Like in season one, you see actor as this archetype, you know, kind of like the villain, the macho guy. It's like a type. Um, so I had to be there and do my programming. It's very skilled, you know, guy rides the horse, shoot the weapons, and but it, I have just to be with my body ready to perform uh, the narratives that were built in his uh, brain. Uh, in season two, uh, something happened to the hosts. Now they are more aware. They start to deal with memories, with emotions. They're becoming more human, slowly. Uh, as you said, you saw the first five episodes, you start to see that happen. It's like the same show that kind of flips on its head. Exactly. That's a very, very well said. That's, okay. a, great, that's a great way to put it. Um, so now, is all about how now that they have a free will hosts they've never had it before what will they do with it so how are they going to behave how do how would they deal with emotions that they never felt before and who are that so we are in a bit of an existential moment for the hosts yeah and for me the 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 Lord is Dolores, isn't it um and Maeve they're the, they're the obvious examples of that because they're further down the line or they're more you're more aware more, yeah more changed it's really interesting to look at your character because he's aware but hasn't quite computed it as well exactly. so that must be a real challenge to play so he's aware of his own naivety exactly but 
can't break the mold in the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the most interesting and fascinating aspect for me uh, in season two is because Hector is more aware of things. He's starting to feel emotions and he's confused by it. He doesn't know how to deal with it, but he's on and off narrative. Sometimes he's just saying lines because he's been programmed to say those lines. And then sometimes he will go off narrative and say something else and go like, oh, what was that? So he's aware of his own, uh, you know, uh, state of uh, being this this creature, and, and it's a it's a big conflict, it's an internal uh, conflict, uh, and that's very interesting. It must give you more to work as you say. You didn't have a backstory at the start, but now you've got that to build exactly. on. So season two must be quite thrilling for you. It, it was very very interesting because it's it's very subtle, it, it, like little nuances. I, I, the way. It, the way it felt was like, you know, any human being, you know, throughout your day, you go through very different emotions, you know, different emotions, like you're happy, you're tired, you're, they're all emotions, but we do not pay attention, we don't realize that we're going through that roller coaster of emotions because we're just distracted, you're on your iPad, your iPhone, you're calling her, but uh, uh, playing Hector in the second season, I had to be attention, very close attention to details, like, okay, when she says, thank you for helping me, and I feel loved, what does that do to my body? Because you change your body, your body will respond and is affected by any emotion in your body. You have a process in your mind that translates into emotions, and the emotions will, you know, affect your body, affect your expression, your eyes, your, and so it was, it was a study on, on human nature in that way, for me, was, it was fascinating. Right. So you, you have to think a lot about those tiny micro-reactions to, to what's happening around you. And learning about yourself, because an, an actor, what is the, the actor works with his own body, his own voice, so that's my tool. My tool, my work tool is my body, my voice, my emotions, so I was, it was a, a study of myself as well, which was, you know, it was great. It's funny sitting here, I'm not sitting here thinking, oh, I'm looking at Hector, which I think says a lot about the, how, how much you've managed to achieve with the character. The, when I come and see you, it's, oh, it's a redone. So yeah, I feel like I'm looking at maybe different if you're in the, in the leather outfit. <laughs> um, so there's incredible chemistry on the show, and it seems to me that the producers have, have worked very hard at pairing up actors. Right. Um, I noticed that more in this season, there's lots of pairs of actors working together. Um, you and Maeve, um, or you and Tandy Newton, um, how, did you have to work at getting that chemistry, or was that, did that just come completely natural? Was that a lot of screen testing? Or? Look, if working with Tandy is the easiest thing I've ever hmm. done. It's, it's, she makes you feel so loved, comfortable, and, and at ease that that chemistry just happened. And I believe you cannot build chemistry, something that either, it just happened. It's like when you become friends with somebody. You cannot explain, you know, you sit down, you meet somebody, you start to talk, you can drink, and then next thing you know, you're like, I like that, I like that person. You don't know why, but you don't know that person, but there's, it's what we call chemistry. Yeah. And I felt that immediately with, uh, with Tandy. She's a brilliant actress and, and amazing human being, so it was just blessed to have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, the character arcs, because, because it's that magic box storytelling, usually when watching a TV show, I can tell where a character's journey is going to go. You can, you can see, if you know a TV show, you can figure out what the setup is and where that person's going to likely end up or right. what the journey is. I can't do that unless <laughs> I really can't because well, it's so mis yeah. The, and that's what I was going to ask you. Is that something that you're that they, they talk to you about your arc? Do you have to figure it out as you go? Yeah, we figure it out as we go. Yeah, we we don't know either. We don't know. In, in, in my case, it's actually I learned to use it in my favor because right. it's, I'm playing a host, so we don't know our past. We don't we don't have a backstory. We don't remember. We have it, but we don't remember mm -hmm. anything. So for me, it wasn't you know, that. Of course, it's uncomfortable because you're not controlling anything. As a performer, you, you try to build you know, that story. You try to understand who that person is. In this case, being a host, 
there's not much I can't understand. It's not rational. It's not a rational process. So it was it was uh, it was great because I'm, I'm I'm having to work and to approach a character in a very uh, new way, which is like just go and do it. There's no preparation. Of course, I worked with one, especially body work, like you were your very first question about you know how to how to be uh, still and how to be in that mode without playing the robot. Do you think more about the minutiae of the performance rather yeah. than the broad strokes? Of yeah. The going and on? now in season two, I did have the chance to work those nuances and, and then work inside. So now I have the foundation that we saw in season one. We have the archetype of Hector, but now mm -hmm. that archetype is getting a soul, is getting, you know, it's getting, it's, it's become human and it's starting to, to feel things. And, and then rationally, he's starting to think, what is this? What do I do with this feeling? Uh, how do I, how do I, hey, is that uncomfortable? Oh, that makes me feel, what is this? So it, it, that's very, uh, it's just rich. I wanted to ask about, I won't put anything in the video that's um, spoilerific, but um, I wanted to ask about episode five. Um, a gang kind of gets together with the comedic characters. There's a comic relief there, but you're kind of the straight man, at least yeah. in one scene where, um, I don't know their names, but the engineer type guys are all tied up and stuff and you come along. Um, that must have been fun. Like, they're doing the comedy thing, but you you were almost Leslie Nielsen playing it completely straight. And that, yeah. and that for me, I, I was laughing out loud. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, of course, off camera is, I was cracking up, right? right. <laughs> but once we're, you know, we're on, I had to, uh, you know, stay in character. And, and you, you said it very well. Hector is, is playing very straight, and he's just his own mission. And it's not that he does have a sense of humor, and he he does, uh, you know, he's amused. It's just not with them. Right. It's not in the mix of you know those guys like all lost and scared. It's just it's very focused. That's the thing, and and his thing is it's about Maeve. So uh, he's discovering something that he never felt before. Going back to that relationship, but something I really appreciated about it was as you said, alpha male, an alpha male character here. But he's now almost subservient to the female character. He's just going to do whatever she says, yeah. which is the hell of a flipper. And as we say, the show flips in his head. Suddenly, he's—I mean, it did happen in season one. But suddenly, he's like, "Oh, just do what you tell me." Yeah, because she—I think Maeve represents. It's beyond uh, just a, a man-woman relationship. Mm -hmm. Maeve, Maeve represents the awakening for him. She's the one that actually uh, woke him up, and. And she's she's the reference for him, so it's it's, it's actually beyond being a romantic uh, couple. I think they're 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 unified, they're together in the name of something much bigger, in the name of their you know understanding who they are and where they are and what do they have to do to get out. Uh, so the meaning is it's broader in, in, in that way. Mm -hmm. I remember. I saw an interview with you ages and was asking you Westworld questions on the red carpet and you couldn't talk about it. Um, Which and I never talked about. No, of course. I'm so sorry. Um, and you um, and they asked you something really lame. It was something like, um, "Oh, I've heard there's loads of sex in the Westworld, and can you talk about that?" And I could see you bristling a little bit because you know there's so much more to it than that. Oh. And in season one, yeah, there is the sex and there's the there's the the heat between those two characters. Right. That almost um, outlines it even more in season two that you know that is so not where this is going. This is not about a, a loving or a, a lusty relationship between these two. There's so yeah. much more to it. Yeah, there is love, but love in the best s sense possible. Like love, not sex, not mm. lust, not... It's very... That's why I'm saying it's, it's broader. It's just it's about something much bigger. And what bring Maeve and Hector together in season two is something very important to, to Maeve. And it becomes very important to Hector. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're on a mission and they will do anything to accomplish uh, that mission. I've got a long wait before.
before I get to see him, so it's, it's just going to show you. Um, yeah, like uh, a month and a half. <laughs> um, you've been killing a variety of ways on screen. Um, most disturbing, you buried alive while paralyzed. Oh, huge. Do you remember fan. that? I remember it, I've seen that so many times. I think you do like a little blink just as the sand's oh, going up. Yeah. <laughs> Break my heart, yeah. man. Um, when you're, when you're reading uh, Westworld scripts and your character gets shot, is do you know at that point, I'll be coming back in the next episode? Yeah. I was, we do. I was wondering if you, if you were like, oh shit, I've got to keep telling you, I mean, the next episode, am I well, coming back? Well, that's kind of the nature of our characters, uh, being a host, that we, we're we there to get shot. We're there, we're, we will die. Somebody will shoot up, especially uh, Hector is, is a villain. So eventually he will get shot will get back. That's the nature of it. Yeah. But we never know. <laughs> so I just play one day at a time. Um, <laughs> as I went through your um, IMDb credits, um, I noticed that a lot of your characters tend to be good guys, but they're never black and white. They tend to be characters with a, with a bit of a naughty streak or a bit of a, um, a bad boy streak, but generally good characters. Is that something you look for? I mean, in Westworld, you're playing a guy who is an archetypal villain when he turns up, but as we're going through the show, we can't be sympathetic with him, like the last stand, we become deputy. And, um, is, that, is that something you're aware of? Is that conscious? No, you know, I, I, I must say I have an appetite for non average Joes, like they say in America. You know, I, I, I like to, uh, when I work, I, you know, the process of preparation, of preparation and Research to me is the most interesting uh, part of the process because it's where I, where I learn, it's where I understand about life, about people, and I do like to go out of my comfort zone in that way, trying to uh, you know play characters that are far from my reality. I do try to go and, and, and do different stuff because I think that's more interesting for me as a process, as a learning process and I'm going to become more mature as, a, as an actor, as a, as a person. Um, so I, I, you know, my tendency is not to go for the, you know, the, the straight just guys that I, that I would know how to play. I, I need not to know. I need to look and say, I don't know this person. For instance, 300. 300 is uh, based on a graphic novel, and when I first got the, uh, the, the graphic novel and I looked at the, the drawing, it was, there's nothing to do with me, even the, physically, and for some reason they couldn't find an actor to play that part, and then you know, they asked me to put myself on tape, and, and I look at that and I, I thought, well, that's a bizarre looking uh, character that belongs to a completely unknown world for me and that attracted me instantly. Yeah. Um, I ended up getting part and it was it was a journey of uh, my god it was amazing how much I learned not only about history about you know just trying to create that character yeah. which is a which is an entity which is not like a human being. It's it's a completely different world. I've never worked with such a stylized you know, kind of a project before. So I like that. I like visiting, you know, foreign uh, territories uh, because I think that's how I, that's how I learn. Um, Westworld has a huge cast of very high quality actors. Which of the cast that you haven't worked with yet would you really like to spend at least a scene with? You mean in Westworld? In Westworld, yeah. I haven't worked with Avon, Rachel Wood, Dolores. I mean, we crossed a little bit. I think you saw it. Yes. Right? Yes. yes you're Brief right. moment. Um, I did have a chance to work with Ed Harris, which is a, a huge reference for me as, mm -hmm. an, as an artist. Uh, but it was very quick. I wouldn't mind having more time with him on screen. And of course, you know, Anthony Hopkins. But he died in the first season. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We never know. Westworld, we, we play here with different timelines, so eventually uh, that would be cool too. Yeah, Ed Harris for me. Yeah, Ed Harris. Harris. Nice. So I want to be in the show just a little bit. Oh, Ed Harris. Come on. Ed Harris is amazing. 
uh, I did have one scene with him where I am in the jail in the first season. I'm in yes, jail and he comes to rescue me. It was a quick moment and I had one of the best days ever uh, with him. So it would be great to get together again. Good stuff. That's well, Phil. Cool. Thanks, Rodrigo. Really Thank appreciate you. your time. That's really yeah. good stuff. That was cool. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys!